Hi, I'm Linda Henke for the Center for Church Music, and it's my privilege to welcome Scott Parsons to be with us today uh, and to talk a little about, bit about his role as an artist, both as a practicing artist and as a professor of art. Scott, tell us a little bit about your educational background. Oh, it's that, well, thank you, Linda. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, mm -hmm. the opportunity to share a little with you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, I did my undergrad at Augustana and I did my graduate work at Boulder. And I've certainly done a number of workshops and things since then, but, but my MFA is from Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Well, tell us a little bit about, and you've also amassed a tremendous number of awards for your art. You've been commissioned in a wide variety of settings and, and we'll touch on that a little bit later and people will be able to kind of see the full slideshow when they view this video. But for now, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about your journey to this place in your life? How did this all come about? Yeah, I like that idea of a journey. <laughs> so geographically, yeah. I grew up on the Front Range of Colorado, mm -hmm. in the suburbs of Denver, along the Platte River, I guess. And I yeah. spent about 38 years there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm up in Sioux Falls, South Dakota now, the way the Platte River flows north and east. I follow yeah. that up here and uh, with my wife, Irene, and now we have two lovely daughters. And Beautiful. I don't know <laughs> how you can get anything done. <laughs> without being distracted by those three beauties they really are something oh thank you yeah, we have a lot of fun <laughs> mm -hmm. well uh did art intersect with your life early on or how did you develop this passion and at what point oh well, yeah i mean it started way early i i mean interestingly i guess they, they test for this now but when i was born i had a uh, fluid in my ears so i couldn't hear and oh. that, that went on for a few years before I, so i acquired my visual skills, you know, before I had okay. words or language and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe, maybe that's fundamental to, to what mm -hmm. I do now, but I always, I always loved to draw since I was little mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. kind of a, a real constant for me. Yeah. Were there any particular influences early on? Early on? Well, there was, there was a TV program on channel two in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, a local live broadcast by this woman. Her name was Noel and it's the Noel and Andy show. And Andy was a sock puppet that she, uh, you know, uh -huh. kind of do this with, and and Andy would never speak, but he always had a marker, so he would draw. Oh, <laughs> and, and so, okay. so maybe I model myself after Andy, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> but but they would have these daily drawing contests, and um, and you could send in your drawing to Channel Two, and and if you got picked, they'd put it on the TV, oh, and uh, and then you would get a, a giant uh, Tootsie Roll in the mail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so is that your earliest award? Yeah, I spent many days trying to win the big pussy. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, what about um, particular sources of inspiration? Um, oh, coming more, yeah, coming more forward. I mean, back in high school, certainly I was interested in, oh, you know, like Frank Frazetta and Stanley and all the mm -hmm. comics. And but I remember going to the Denver Art Museum and oh, yeah. being blown away by some of the 19th century painters, <sighs> you know, Albert Bierstadt, oh. and Figaro, and so you know i had that and then i wanted to go i ended up going down to the art uh institute and drawing uh mm -hmm. from the models at night when i was in high school that sort of thing and then, mm -hmm. and then so, i ended up so oh, sorry, did you ahead. have a did you have a pretty good exposure in high school to art programs they're becoming well, sort of a lost a, thing <laughs> yeah well yeah, really my, my art teacher had an mfa so that was kind of mm -hmm. neat so he, mm -hmm. yeah his, his name well we called him mr k Mr. Yeah. Klostermeyer. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> did you have an opportunity to be ex uh, exposed to various different media? Well, that was pretty standard stuff. Yeah, ceramics yeah. and painting. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's neat. OK. <laughs> yeah. And any mentors that uh, were a particular source of encouragement for you, other than your dear parents? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so supportive. Mm -hmm. um, well, like mentors in college, uh, Bob Aldern, a mm -hmm. liturgical artist here in the mm -hmm. upper Midwest, for, mm -hmm. uh, did many church pieces. And then Carl Grupp was another professor here at Augustana that was very dear to me. Um, mm -hmm. He was the reason I came to Augustana. I, I just, mm -hmm. when I met him, I thought, oh, this is a real artist <laughs> you yeah. know, that yeah. I want to study with. Well, and that is kind of special that you had a chance to kind of come full cycle first being a student at Augustana and now being in the, the role of a professor and teacher. Oh and yeah, all that's that wonderful. Stuff. So, uh, 
Well, how would you uh, describe yourself as an artist? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm interested in, in doing art that can reach people. And I find that the idea or if a concept of place is really interesting to me, like how you transform or change a space into a place, mm -hmm. right? And so people relate somehow to a, a place, you know, that it becomes recognizable or meaningful. I love to engage in artwork that can create, you know, metaphors that relate to, to mm -hmm. how a, someone uses a space or moves through a space or reminds mm -hmm. them of something that might have been there before or something else in their lives. It's like, uh, right, like listening to a good good song on the radio, right, how it changes your your day mm -hmm. when you're driving or in your car. Yeah. I think I think art can have a role like that in people's everyday lives. And, and that's that's kind of the area that I really try to focus in. I think two of those things um, resonate with me and my experience of your work. One is that I think one of the reasons I think you're probably as successful as you are with your commissioned work is that you're a very good listener. Um, you, you look and you listen and you, you read the people and you read the space and you find out what they care about. And to me, that's really powerful. Um, the other thing is that um, you honor the space that you come into and, and seek to bring to it something that's going to make it richer for those who experience it. And that's, um, that makes you a good artist in general, I imagine, but especially in the liturgical realm, that's something that uh, I really admire. Um, Thank you. How would you describe your evolution as a practicing artist? Kind of where did you start and where did you go to? Okay, well, I, I, uh, I mean, I guess I began as, with drawings and paintings and I carried that through college but I, there was all these types where i would just do things out on the college campus green and mm -hmm. things like that and i didn't even probably know that's what you would call mm -hmm. public art or installation art yeah. right so but i was always interested in, in, in art and spaces and, mm -hmm. and then oh uh, wasn't too long after grad school that i, I got a a mailer but that was when the calls came in the mail for, yes for, for the olden school. days yeah <laughs> and, I, and i got a second and i got a third i think i got five of these posters for the the light rail project in denver and i thought mm -hmm. you know those are the things you want to pay attention to if you get so i thought maybe i should try this out so that was kind of my first foray into public art and i really again had not a lot of good ideas about i mean i, I think i did my foundational work in college and thinking about design and you know the elements and principles of art but to, but to apply it to a, like a downtown space was all new to me yeah. so I remember just walking around downtown Denver and just looking at things and thinking yeah. you know uh oh okay aluminum oh uh, granite oh you know and just trying to think about what kind of materials yeah. could go in a space and it was mm -hmm. so it's been a lot of just asking questions and talking to other you know, wonderful artists that share their experiences and mm -hmm. kind of learning as you go. You know? Sure, yeah. that's great. Um, has your evolution kind of moved forward in an intentional way or has it been kind of in response to opportunities that came your way or is it a little bit of both? Yeah, I'm sure it's not not all planned. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the constant was I knew I was gonna do art, right? Yeah. Just, you know, it's just, what form that would take and how that would play out. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when, when opportunities come like that, you want, I, again, I think it's important to pay, mm -hmm. pay attention to those. Mm -hmm. um, and you were open to working in different forms and different materials and so forth from the beginning? Yeah, I think that was the okay. kind of, um, yeah. I mean, that's the key to public art. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, I don't, I don't think it's so much what you have to say, but it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. and, and a big part of that is figuring out the right materials to work with. Mm -hmm. And so, and so then it's an interesting practice because I don't always make every part of what I do. Yeah. I, I try to collaborate and work with other studios and other artists mm -hmm. who have better experience in certain materials. And so, mm -hmm. like Barbara Derricks at the Derricks Glass Studio, she mm -hmm. she described the role of a public artist, one that certainly they interact with all the time, is mm -hmm. you're like the composer of this, or like the conductor of the symphony. Conductor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you're getting all the musicians to mm -hmm. play along with you. Hopefully, mm -hmm. it's okay. Good well, that that description certainly fits your relationship with the studio. Yeah, um, uh, you've had a lot of projects with them, and uh, tell us a little bit about how you kind of together moved in some new directions for stained glass. 
Uh, so yeah, stained glass. Well, I, I had an opportunity to compete for a project um, that I didn't get here in Sioux Falls with with an architectural firm and a church, and, and um, but it but it was a enriching process, and I, and I just I guess uh, somehow stayed in touch with the architect. So then when another church was being built here, they they had asked me to maybe propose some glass ideas for that, and then that was a matter of okay glass. <laughs> you know, okay, you know, we do yeah. this, <laughs> and so so that was you know it's it's kind of funny, but being in a smaller town as opposed to a big city, I think sometimes those opportunities come to you um, more readily, even though maybe there's less of them because uh -huh. uh, just it's a smaller community. But that's when I got in touch with uh, Derek's Glass Studios. And, mm -hmm. and then that was just such a magnificent, uh, you know, opportunity to travel yeah. to Germany and work with mm -hmm. all the glass artists there. But yeah, a real partnership there. I mean, yeah. I, you come up with ideas for stained glass that I had never seen never seen before and I can't imagine what were the the artisans there how did they respond to some of the things that you would bring oh, to them well they, they, I mean they, I think they like to work with me <laughs> oh because it, yeah. it gives them an opportunity but, to do something no honestly the, the first time I'm there for sure the first couple of times you're not sure if you're supposed to be yeah. there you know because there's really famous artists there and uh, but there's a magnificent German artist Johannes Schreider and um and he looked at the work for Gloria Day, and, mm -hmm. and he, he's well in German. He told me he said he said he said you nailed it. You know that that's perfect. I agree. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, okay, okay, maybe I can be. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So yeah. then I then I felt okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, Amazing. To yeah. yeah. But to be honest, the work you've done with mosaics and terrazzo, uh, that's completely out of my vision of what those media can do i mean oh, yeah. you, you really do have a an interesting vision potential and opportunity to kind of take things in in new directions i think and that's that's a gift you bring to the whole art community i think well you're very kind yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. um in what ways do your spiritual beliefs and your core convictions inform your art practice yeah. and the thematic emphases of your work well i think you know i'm in my 50s now so i think there's a maturity <laughs> that comes when you're you know not 20s i mean i started out thinking that looking how art could be sort of subversive how it, you can inscribe the spiritual as political mm -hmm. political as spirit but i think more and more of my work is just informed simply by the, the mystery of grace and the ongoing act of God's creation and trying to just fit into a you know a sliver of that process yeah. and try, try to make what you can in the world to be a, a better place you know yeah. could you say some a little something about you, you've traveled quite a bit and you've been influenced by the experiences we've had in other parts of the world and yeah, can, sure. can you describe that a little bit well, again like going back to the uh, the earlier days, I, I spent a lot of time in Latin America. I spent a lot of time working with uh, churches, refugee camps, orphanages, um, being in war zones. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was some of that was pretty intense, and and it got to a point where maybe this is interesting. Where where I thought, you know, how how does art gonna change any of this? You know, and I, this is back in my college days, and I I thought I, I need to be a doctor if I'm gonna make a difference. You know here and so i i was going to drop all my art classes and go the pre-med route you know i mean it was that close and uh but i met a fellow in el salvador who um i mean it's more than just this but but in a simplistic but in a profound way he said you know if you go back to the u.s and be a doctor or study to be a doctor and come back here you might affect twenty thousand people in your lifetime but he mm -hmm. said if you become an artist he said you might also affect 20 other people in a lifetime he said that but that would be even greater because that really has the potential for political change mm -hmm. you know and so after traveling to all those clinics you know and seeing these huge infant mortality rates i mean all these terrible things i just but but there's like this level of meaning in people's lives that's equally important mm -hmm. as you know all of that and, mm -hmm. and I, I guess that's where artists traffic is we <laughs> Yeah. We, we proffer these ideas, these these suggestions of how, the, the, hey, this might fit into your life this way, or this this might give you a little bit of meaning, mm -hmm. or add to what you're thinking about, or even just open our hearts and our minds to 
a different way of a, a yeah. different way of seeing maybe seeing the world yeah. and seeing ourselves so yeah Absolutely. um your your travels i think have also been somewhat evident in your work in terms of in interpreting a project in terms of um the space not just as it is today but as it has been historically with yeah. some of the uh, indigenous people and so forth. Could you say a little bit about that? Oh, sure. I mean, I think some of us started way back in college again, our art departments combined with our anthropology department. So I oh, I spent, now that... a lot of time on, on oh, okay. so the artists get employed by the anthropologists in the summer and we go on, uh -huh. you know, archeological sites and do, do digs. And, mm -hmm. and so it's pretty a profound experience. For example, once I found a Clovis point, which is a, perhaps the earliest points made in North America, but they would have been used to stab a, a mammoth and, uh, you know, that 10,000, you know, last ice age. And so yeah. that's a profound connection. Certainly uh, the landscape of South Dakota, the landscape oh, of Colorado yeah. uh, evoke yeah. a, a kind of sensibility of the past, mm -hmm. I think all the time. And then, mm -hmm. and then that first project I was mentioning earlier for the light rail downtown, mm -hmm. um, you know, you just think about a place and you think about, um, well, light rail, you're moving through, mm -hmm. traveling. So yes. I, and then you start thinking, oh, how do people travel or how did people travel? And then I started mm -hmm. thinking about stars as sort of a navigational way of knowing mm -hmm. where you were on the landscape. Mm -hmm. And then it became, well, whose stars, you know? Um, you know so then I thought, well, it should be the Native American stars in this yeah. piece. And so then that, that began a multi-year, you know, project of researching mm -hmm. and working with over 20 different languages and, all kinds of communities, nations, pueblos that had a, you know, a connection to Colorado. Sure. So yeah, that stuff's always, always so that's good. rich for you, but it's also rich in that you then introduce others into um, a world that they probably were not even aware of. And that yeah. that's pretty profound too. Okay, well, let's get to the good stuff, huh? This is one of the earliest projects that I found and I thought it was so interesting. Can you say just a little bit about this? So I'm, I'm still seeing the first slide or whatever is there. Oh no, I'm looking at the reconciliation project. Shoot. Oh, okay. okay. I'll just talk about it. Yeah, okay. I mean, I know what it is. <laughs> okay, that's great. Yeah, that was a couple of years after I got out of grad school. The, um, you know, at least back then the Lutheran colleges rotated uh, the Nobel Peace Prize Forum each year mm -hmm. and, or maybe it was every other year, but uh, it was gonna be at Augustana and I was invited to create a kind of a backdrop for the speakers and, um, and I, I sort of had some ideas uh, and a buddy of mine actually, Dave Greenland helped, you know, we sort of teamed up on this and he was also graduated from Augie, um, but they didn't like any of our ideas. And then uh, Martin Brokenleg had been asked to see if some of the Lakota folks could come out and set up some teepees or something. And it was, mm -hmm. it was kind of a strange idea, but, it, but uh, we went over and talked to Martin Brokenleg and asked if we could sort of do his teepees for him. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and you know, 1992 is the 500th right mm -hmm. anniversary of Columbus and all that. So yeah. Um, so the idea was to create a, a, you know, like like the images from Wounded Knee, you know, this kind of massacre sort of scene with burnt lodgepole mm -hmm. pines, and turn it into kind of a national park, really, mm -hmm. that would offer words of reconciliation from the different, mm -hmm. um, from various groups that you know say what ought to be said or imagine what ought to be said mm -hmm. on the 500th anniversary. And so, well, it is um, a powerful setting, and the, those very simple forms speak in a profound way. I I think it's really, really lovely. I wish well, I could have seen it. <laughs> well, then the image on the oops, the right of those. I got. I can see a little thumbnail. That that one is uh, in Denver. So we took that idea. Oh, okay. The Denver for because Colorado had the first state holiday for. Columbus. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then they, they had this history of parades. And so mm -hmm. we created the backdrop for the, <laughs> the parade. <Okay. laughs> yes. For about a hundred of these burned teepees uh, mm. around Stoic Park. And wow. Anyway, I, I really think it recharted, in a sense, a little bit the course of memory. And, and, mm -hmm. and really, it was, the, it was too, too strong of an image. They, the, ultimately, the parade was canceled. You, you just couldn't roll your <laughs> floats by all of that. Oh, yeah. yeah so it was, it was a powerful experience. You know, thousands of people showed up to, to wow. say no to that parade. Yeah, it was wow. really, really wow. wonderful. Well, now I'm looking at Orlando Welcoming Gardens. What can you say about this project? Oh, so, so yes. Yeah, so 
I mean, I know some of the stuff would be on my website, but but one of the really fun things about that, well, a couple of things, maybe one is uh, as a finalist, you know, usually with these projects, mm -hmm. a well-run program will bring in two or three, four finalists. Yeah. I think there were four of us for this. And you visit the site, you try to find out what's important and, you know, get a feel for everything. And one of the things they told us is no matter what you do, do not include any of the amusement parks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, I thought, well, that's fine, but that's not how I think about Orlando. You know, or uh, most people. So, so I, I did what they told me not to do, and they, and they still picked me. That's <laughs> so, good. Yeah, so. you got to know what you know. <laughs> that's and, great. But they did send me recently, this is the other cool thing, they sent me recently uh, a video of uh, someone proposing marriage on one of these, these oh floors. Oh, my. Oh, so, my. Well, you know, it, it was an attempt to just make something beautiful in the airport for people mm -hmm. to enjoy and, and, mm -hmm. and connect with different parts of Orlando. One of those was, you know, the entertainment uh, economy, but there sure. were other others as well. Well, a couple of things that um, I guess I'd like to mention is that you were the first person who ever got me thinking about floors as an art Sure. Than you, I mean, it really is amazing. I had never thought in those terms, and you obviously had, and uh, to great uh, benefit to many people. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you to comment on is terrazzo. Can you just describe that real briefly? What? Yeah, what and that we probably is? have all. If, if you don't know what it is, you probably have experienced it if you just think back to your high school hallways or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for many, I mean, it goes goes way back in time, but, uh, you know, with Italian uh, history, but the uh, it's it, most more recently it was, and I mean, it's been cementitious for many years. So you pour cement and you have typically a, a lot of rocks, maybe maybe marbles or granites in it, and then you mm -hmm. grind it down. But but in more recent years, uh, artists have been substituting out epoxies and then uh -huh. for the cement. And so with epoxy, you can color it any way you want to even as brilliantly as you want and then it gets pretty interesting well do you put stone in it because uh -huh. the stone used to carry the color but now you can put i mean i've used uh windshields i you uh -huh. know recycled windshields uh -huh. i recycled porcelain of toilets you know i mean all, there's all kinds of fun things you can uh, throw into the terrazzo but but it's really old school it's old world it's, uh -huh. it's hands and knees it's a very slow process uh, yeah. to do but um, has good energy though <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, of really course, does. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. That's yeah. great. Um, I was just gonna say too, you know, the the idea of floors is. I always have thought of myself as a flat artist. <laughs> oh. And so, with you thinking about public spaces, it's just it was just kind of a practical thing, you know. Mm -hmm. It's either gonna be a wall or. <laughs> yeah. Floor. Okay. Or ceiling. Yeah. yeah. yeah ceiling, okay. possibly. Yeah. Okay. This one, so called stream. I wish I could see it. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, this is the pendulum. Yes. Oh yeah, so that, that's here at Augustana. They they had a a real nostalgia for the old science building when they redid it, and the old pendulum that was there that was really done on a budget. The the, the bob was actually a shot put. <laughs> really. <laughs> it just hung there for years. And anyway, so we had the. I worked with another artist on this one, David Griggs. And, you know, that's something too to think about collaborating with other artists and and when you work in a public space, it's just so wonderfully exciting to I, I love that kind of aspect so so uh david uh, had a studio near me in denver and, and uh, he had done a couple pendulums and i thought well let's mm -hmm. let's do a pendulum together and we've done some other projects together mm -hmm. so that's but i love the connection of trying to connect a very small space to a very big one you know the mm -hmm. micro to the macro and if you stand in front of a pendulum you're thinking about eventually maybe sort of like mm -hmm. planetary and cosmic yeah. So universe connections and you see that motion and that movement right there so mm -hmm. so trying to layer some of those ideas in, in the in the glass and terrazzo that you see in those images mm -hmm. that's really stunning flights of fancy flights of fancy uh, this is the uh <laughs> this is the sioux falls one right mm -hmm. yes. yeah okay yeah so this is um two two mosaic pieces that i did um actually that was another interesting one because they they had a certain budget and I knew it wasn't enough, at least to do what I needed to do. And it really could have maybe afforded oil on canvas, you know. Yeah. Canvas. Yeah. But that's not uh, that's not appropriate in a big commercial airport space. So, mm -hmm. I, I I proposed what I proposed, but I said they're probably gonna have to double their <laughs> their budget mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to pull this off. And and uh, I they took me seriously, and they went into the community, and they 
they raised the funds and they chose wow. me for their project. But, mm -hmm. but again, you know, like we have this wonderful bike path that loops around. Sioux Falls is kind of almost on an island, the way the river mm -hmm. flows around us. And so the bike path I take right all the time. And a lot of the imagery in that is just because it goes by the airport. It's just a lot of imagery. Mm -hmm. It's just things you see on the bike trail when you go <laughs> biking around the airport. Yeah. But then again, that historical component and, and making mm -hmm. the historical fresh and contemporary, like there's a fancy shawl dancer that I worked with there and uh, that's in the imagery. And there's Raven Industries in town that used to do lots of hot air balloons. Lots of things that kind of go up in the sky, you know, butterflies. Yeah. So all these connections with flights. Mm -hmm. That's neat. That's neat. Oh, I should tell you that. So all the, all the airport board of director people had, they all had like a favorite. Well, I was proposing like we have these sort of like, uh, you know, like, like like the old sort of signs that would show you when the flights were taking off. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of little dot letters. And and they got excited by that. And then they all had like their favorite city they wanted to go to. And so there, there's so you'll see like flights to Paris or London, which really doesn't happen from Sioux Falls. <laughs> 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 but I thought if they could do that, then I could do that. So so I snuck in one uh, that, that it says Narnia. So, oh, very good. Very I think good. there's a 9, 10 a.m. flight to Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is another example of mosaic that just kind of blows my mind. It's not what I'm used to thinking of when I think of mosaic. And it's, Thank it's you. very lovely. And I worked with the great folks at the, they're up in Montreal, Mosaica. Oh. Help me with that. Yeah. The school project. Oh, at yeah. Sonia Santomayor Elementary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, well, that's the only Spanish, they were building a school here in Sioux Falls that was Spanish immersion, and my mm -hmm. kids were going to be headed that way, Yay. and, and they, uh, the principal and one of the parents came over one day and said, can we do something? I thought, well, yeah, I think we can. Yeah. <laughs> so, or we can propose it, see if people will fund it. So, again, that wasn't like uh, tax money or percent for art, mm -hmm. that was just a community saying we need some art in our new yeah. school. Yeah. And so it's really a, a meditation on all the mm -hmm experiences I think about in my travels in Latin America mm -hmm. just to make something uh, mm -hmm. you know sort of beautiful in that space uh, there's mm -hmm. uh, a suggestion of the Andean cross uh, that you mm -hmm. might yes notice there. yes and uh, there's um, Mayan glyphs that talk about people and books and you mm -hmm. know different so there's lots of kind of cool different yeah. layers of things. now this does this piece reside on the floor or on the wall that's that's on a wall that's on so if you come okay. into the school you, you walk mm -hmm. under it wow so uh, I kind of want to do it so my kids would yes, see dad yes. every day when they came into school. That's right. Yeah. Must be exciting for them. That's great. And then the really cool thing is I thought, well, maybe we should get a quote from the justice, Sonia Sotomayor. The oh, Court, yes. Yeah. To go with it. And she was all into it. And That's she sent cool. a bunch of different quotes and ideas. Mm -hmm. And I let me pick from those. And it's gracious. I mean, that was wonderful to mm -hmm. collaborate with the Supreme Court justice. Wow. On our project. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Gloria Day. Was this your first stained glass? Yeah, that was my first stained glass piece. Wow. Amazing. Oh, well, thank you. And it's it's a painted glass, which is um, mm -hmm. it's vitreous enamels fired on ordinary mm -hmm. window glass, architectural plate glass. Really? Okay. It, it's north facing, so you can do that mm -hmm. readily with the north facing. But it's uh so it's an affordable way to do stained glass. Okay. And, uh, okay. And I, I think we talked some when, when I was working on this. You yeah, certainly, yeah. You certainly helped me. And it just was, yeah, I still, I just, I wish I could visit that space. It just, it just seems like a sacred space, even from the, oh. from the, seeing the pictures. So. And there are wonderful references in the windows to the landscape, as well as to um, theological and liturgical references. Um, oh yeah, for sure. It's, it's kind of Trinitarian. Direction. You know, mm -hmm. the sort of as you, as you move across, and mm -hmm. you know, one thing I realized when I went to Germany was going to Colmar. Pro probably many folks that are listening might be familiar with the, the Matthias Grinwald, the, the Eisenheim altarpiece there. Mm -hmm. That triptych, and you know, the of course Christ on the cross is so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's well, there's no words for it. It's so amazing, mm -hmm. but but you know, it folds shut too, and on the outside you would have the. I guess it would be the outside, You'd have, but you have the you have the resurrection of Christ mm -hmm. and the soldiers falling down and this brilliant sun, and it's red ringed and it's yellow ringed. And I thought, 
and now I think <laughs> that somehow must have been in my subconscious because that's kind of what I see when I look at the center of that design. So, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Piece, yeah. It is. It's beautiful. Now we're back to mosaics. Mosaics. And this is Holy Spirit in Sioux Falls. Okay. So, yeah, they, those were five different floor pieces. And there was the church, of course, had a theme for each. Um, mm -hmm. the, the one that maybe is the most the, the the biggest challenge for me was the the, the precious heart of Jesus where um, I don't know it's, it's like how do you do a heart yeah. <laughs> and not have it be cliche yeah. or like trite or and you know I, and I don't certainly I don't want to put like the face of Christ in the floor and have somebody step on it so that mm -hmm. you know, so you have to do it in a symbolic way and how do you mm -hmm. do a symbol of a a heart and and yeah. but then I thought you know I have a I think she was four at a time, my younger daughter, and she was drawing hearts. Mm -hmm. And I thought a four-year-old can draw a pure heart. And mm -hmm. so that's that's integrated into the mm -hmm. one of those designs there that yeah. you see Canis yeah. drawing. <laughs> Where are the different pieces located? Well, four sort of um I mean, it was a redesign of the sanctuary where they moved the altar from the center a little more to one side of an octagon so there mm -hmm. so four of those are kind of along the four of the eight walls of mm -hmm. that okay. uh, space and then the fifth one with the sacred heart uh resides in a little chapel space oh, out so. okay that's great lovely okay saint michael's in um sioux falls yeah that's, beautiful space yeah and again that was this was another uh sort of older sanctuary design that they trying to open up a little bit, bring more light in. And part of that process, they thought, let's do some traditional mosaics in the floor. Mm -hmm. So I was able to do three. Uh, one was on the altar, one was in front of the altar, and one was at the uh, entrance where you would have the baptismal font. Mm -hmm. So oh, we wow. a lot of discussion about the, you know, the sacraments and the rituals of the church mm -hmm. and really uh, mm -hmm. sort of entering into from baptism to death. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the thing that is so wonderful about so the wings of St. Michael, that piece in front of the steps up to the altar is, uh, that's where the caskets go mm -hmm. at a funeral. And so you're, you're sort of visually, there's wings there. Yeah. The, yeah. And so that was, and the baptismal one was, uh, that was all funded by, a, I never met her, but this, everybody told me this gal that just had such this, you know, amazing, boisterous, lively personality. And they thought mm -hmm. the colors and everything, was, that was her. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was an honor to do, do that. And of course, my plan was that the font would go in the center of that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how I do. But they they have they have yet to do that. They, they don't want to cover it up, <laughs> so it's, it sits right next to it. But, yeah, because that's where it probably should be if that's where the casket is. Well, be yeah, 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 yeah. Stations of the Cross. Um, yeah, so this is a real recent piece that I uh, came back to. St. Michael's invited me back to do stations that they, they never had stations mm -hmm. in. in uh, that's a huge i mean i always wanted to do this yeah station, but that's a huge one <laughs> mm -hmm, it sure and, is. Yeah, and you did that in glass mosaic glass okay. mosaic and they're incredibly uh, in a sense small they're just eight by ten inches yeah, yeah and so you have hundreds and hundreds of pieces mm -hmm. in an eight by ten inch areas wow very very, very difficult process wow. to make yeah but what a what a gift to that church it's really rich um so often uh, you see um churches with all the brick inside which is just lovely but then there's nothing to kind of rest yeah. you know kind of bring focus to the space and certainly your work does a good job with that oh, thank you. okay holy trinity in columbus ohio oh yeah <laughs> yeah know this one a little bit yeah, well big thanks for the introduction yeah, there yes. sure. yeah sure i wish we had time to do pictures of all these spaces <laughs> where this stuff resides yeah uh, that was a fun one yeah. well you know that's an interesting sanctuary right because they, they yeah. move they move everything around you know mm -hmm. the seating and the altar and so but they had that big blank wall yeah so the big blank opportunity wall. <laughs> sure was and i can tell you they're thrilled with it they just are and i can see why it's great uh and this was glass mosaic and yeah. it's not lit from behind, is it? It's just. Oh, that's, it's, it, it glows, yeah. There, yeah. It was intentional to paint white behind it so that the light would come oh, in. Oh, wow. And kind of Move around, through sure. It. 
And also, wow. if you can kind of tell in the photos, there's kind of a, a shallow relief to the structure. So uh -huh. it's, it's not uh -huh. all flat, but uh -huh. so there's a throwing of shadow. It's kind of a triptych, you know, yeah. referencing uh -huh. the original sure. all the pieces, but also, again, trying to reference the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Very nice. Our Lady of the Angels in Scottsdale. Yeah, that's that's uh, mm -hmm. a, that was a wonderful one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, every one of these projects is an opportunity to try to learn something and mm -hmm. to be exposed to the to Franciscan theology was just mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just mm -hmm. a fantastic thing. And mm -hmm. and this was really based on the Canticle of Creation by Saint Francis. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. there's different stanzas that speak of uh, Brother Wind, or yeah. Sister Earth, and you know the mm -hmm. last one he wrote right before he died really was a stanza to Sister Death. Oh, so, wow. so all so those are represented in different class pieces mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. um, the church, as well as uh, the the nativity scene, which was Saint Francis's idea to get an ox and oh, a and, I didn't realize and, that and uh, have the first nativity. So, so that's behind the altar. Mm -hmm. But the big piece, the, the real tall one you see that's visible from the mm -hmm. Lincoln Avenue there in Phoenix, mm -hmm. is is uh, the Assumption of Mary. So it's mm -hmm. like, called the wow. Marian window. Mm -hmm. and, sure. uh, that's that that's. Uh, you know, when I presented that, uh, I mean, you don't know how people like the committee is going to. So I just put it up on the screen, and mm -hmm. projected it, and and nobody said anything. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Don't know how to interpret that, right? <laughs> yeah, but but you know, before we were done, people were in tears. I mean, they were yeah. so moved. So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're not. Sometimes you're not sure. But you know, happening. one of the things. Um, I guess that I relate to with, with some of your work is that I was a writer, a word person before I was an artist. And when I first started moving into the art field, I can still remember the first set of work that was exhibited and the response to it. And I remember thinking, how can this have meaning to them without any words mm -hmm. to go with it? And to come to that, realization that um, I, that people relate to the visual in a way that's every bit as powerful. Yeah. And, um, well, it, I mean, I like to start my drawing courses with uh, the images of Chave Cave. Mm -hmm. and, and those images are 12 times older than any other Greek philosophers, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. the, the, the imagery is so profoundly human mm -hmm. and so profoundly buried in, <laughs> in the deepness mm -hmm. of who we are. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it precedes, precedes language. I, I mean, I've always admired your, your gift for words. <laughs> and well, but uh, there's something also, I mean, people respond to color and that's the other thing. I, I guess I had this presumption that people would only relate to something that was quite representational, but I found that, that people of all walks of life relate quite well to color and to form and to, to imagination. And I love that different people see different things and experience it in, in fresh and different ways. Well, if we have just a minute, I'd like to ask you just a little bit about your work uh, as an artist in, in combination with your work as a professor. Yeah. Um, how do those two interact or interplay for you? Probably more started out by necessity, right? Teaching is a nice way to go for, yeah. for, uh, you know, uh, for artists. But, mm -hmm. but I, I have grown over the years to so appreciate um, and really now recognize that it's an opportunity to sort of, you know, we're sort of caretakers of the canon, mm -hmm. if you will, yeah. of art, you know, and all the artists that have come before us. Mm -hmm. And it's ours for a little while, and then it's mm -hmm. ours to hand off to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And so to yeah. be around all the idealism. Mm -hmm. and sincerity and searching mm -hmm. that students it's just yeah i feel it's just a privilege to be in those spaces with them. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> share that yeah um do your relations relationships and interactions with students challenge you inspire you um, oh, yeah. stimulate you yeah I'll, frustrate yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, that could be that too. <laughs> but it's the good stuff is overwhelmingly, yeah, you know, more right. so there than, than the rest of it. Yeah. Um, are and there, I, you know, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go, I was just going to ask um, are there ways that 
your liturgical work, you're able to kind of use that to inspire some of your students to consider that type of expression or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think as artists, I mean, the best thing we can do is probably sort of teach in a sense by example and, mm -hmm. and share our experience in the years mm -hmm. we've had in the studio. So, yeah. but I mean, one of the things I've tried to do, which I think has been some of the most important classes I've taught is to do these, do travel courses during our, yeah. our interim. And so we've done Peru a few times, but we've done uh, also Germany a few times. So mm -hmm. students have actually been able to go to the same last studio that I've, I mean, I've worked in a couple of different class studios in Germany, but we've gone to Derek's. They've been so, so welcoming and mm -hmm. to allow the students to see you know world-class art and be in the yeah. same space with with yeah. those artists and making their own work and mm -hmm. and seeing like the cologne theater or the straussburg sure. theater, you know well yeah. and to recognize that in some parts of the world the churches really are a repository for fine art i mean that's oh, yeah. uh, talk about I being a caretaker that's one of the roles that the church plays, so <laughs> and those so are the original great public art commissions right <laughs> you know yeah, yeah so um, that's great but, but oh. you know it's not everybody gets to go to the cologne cathedral too so you know there's mm -hmm. projects i like to do with my students where we do intentionally sort of seek out the i mean i call it the sacred you know in our everyday lives and, and yeah and, and they have to kind of wrestle with what that means and where they find it how to mm -hmm. demarcate it yeah. what it asks of us yeah yeah great okay. well good well this has been a joy uh, Gosh, what a privilege to sit down and chit chat with you and get a sense of what you're up to these days. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, for our viewers, um, you can uh, check at the end of the video and you'll find out how to contact um, Scott. He, uh, his background in graphic design shows up on his website and in his ability to take good pictures. And it is a treat to visit his website for sure. So thank you very much.